Welcome, uh, everybody, back to uh, Siegel Talks here at the Martin Siegel Theater Center at the Graduate Center CUNY from Manhattan, New York City. My name is Frank Kenschkun. I'm the uh, director of the D. Siegel Center. And um, here we are, uh, another Friday, actually, the seventh Friday. For seven weeks, we are hosting uh, talks uh, with uh, our colleagues from the global theater community, workers in the theater and in the performing arts uh, whose work we admire, we support, and we feel it is very important uh, to hear from. We had another week with voices uh, from uh, South Africa. We had Ismail Mohammed, we had Natalia Vorozbit from uh, Ukraine. We had Nizar and uh, Fida from Palestine. Uh, yesterday we heard from Roberta and um, from Dion uh, from, from Brazil, from Sao Paulo. And, um, and today we have guests uh, from a country that is uh, so significant in this world that uh, where we all come from, this is uh, our the cradle of mankind is Africa. Um, we really do not know enough. Uh, we should all uh, know much more, engage much more with this, the country, the culture, um, and also the situation and understand the significance of this place. Also, it has such a long, long tradition of performing, uh, of uh, storytelling, of theater festivals. We had already Aristide uh, from uh, Burkina Faso and um, with us, we had uh, South Africa uh, with us, uh, with Basil Jones. And, um, and, uh, <clears throat> and then we had uh, the great uh, uh, a market theater, Ismail, who, who joined us. And today we have uh, two, two voices uh, from Cameroon. And with us is uh, Edouard Elvis Vuma, uh, who's a writer, playwright, and also a director, and uh, Armin Yolo, uh, who works in the theater as an actor, also writes and creates uh, works theater. So welcome, both of you. So where are you at the moment? Hello? Thank you, Frank. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, me at the moment, I'm uh, in uh, my house. <laughs> uh huh. And so, where are you? What in what what <laughs> where what, what, where's your house and what city and what time is it? I mean, um, well, my house in, is in Yaoundé, that is the capital of uh, Cameroon. And um, what, what time is it now? It is, uh, yes, it's 5 p.m. right now. 5 p.m. and uh, yes, and five, in five minutes, something like that, I think, yes. So we are in Yaoundé, Cameroon, yes. Fantastic, so are you uh, in confinement? Are you under, uh, under um, are you allowed to go out on the street? What are the rules in, in Cameroon at the moment? Um, I'll just translate for Elise. Mm -hmm. uh, Elise. Et ça avait demandé d'abord où vous êtes, tous les deux, et puis il demande, uh, est-ce que vous êtes eh, obligé de rester chez vous? Est-ce que vous êtes confiné actuellement? Bon, moi, je, déjà, je suis à Yaoundé, au Cameroun, je suis à la maison, et euh, le, je, je suis dans mon bureau, c'est ici que je travaille, quand je vais écrire, et je vais me retirer, bon. Mais euh, non, on n'est pas confiné. Il n'y a pas eu de confinement aussi sévère que. On nous a plus conseillé le, le confinement, mais, euh, mais on ne nous l'a pas imposé. So, he says so we that... have Heather with us, Heather Daniel, who is translating with that, also as a translator of plays of both of them. So thank you, Heather, for joining. Mm -hmm. um, and what is he telling us? So um, uh, Elvis is also in Yaoundé, where um, Ermin is. He's at his house um, in his office uh, where he writes, and he says that um, they're actually not um, uh, obligated to come. They're not quarantined. It's um, um, advised, but it's not mandatory. So if I understand right, there's no quarantine. Nobody wears face masks. Everybody can go out uh, uh, following their own judgment. Elvis, tu veux peut-être répondre d'abord? Est-ce que vous êtes obligé de porter des masques? Est-ce que vous pouvez sortir comme vous voulez? Oui, donc dans un premier temps, euh, enfin, on a, il y avait certaines mesures comme l'interdiction des surcharges dans les transports, les fermetures de bar. Le port du masque est obligatoire dans les, les lieux publics. Donc en sortant, on est obligé de, de porter des masques. Mais on est libre de sortir quand même. 
So they can leave. Um, earlier on, there were certain measures taken. Um, bars were closed and there were um, uh, rules according to about transport, transportation, public transportation. But now um, they can go where they want to, but they have to wear masks when they go out. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, all, all bars are open. Um, are, all stores are open, markets are open. Uh, markets are open, bars, stores are open. Well, um, I think till last week or two weeks ago, um, the bars were obliged to close at 6 p.m. From 6 p.m., everything ha uh, had to close, like everything mm -hmm. that was commercial, uh, bars, stores, and well, and markets also. But in, I think it was last week, I don't remember the exact day, that the, um, there was a kind of um, a kind of uh, they the kind of lift lifted some uh, some of the of the restrictions. They said that okay, now bars are allowed to open um, beyond six p.m. So mm -hmm. bars are open, stores are open, markets are open. But as Elvis said, we are obliged to wear masks when we go out. And uh, um, how are the numbers of infections and uh, uh, people who die? Do you, is there information out? Do you know uh, how uh, hard Cameroon has been hit by this? Um, currently, we, we have something like 2,000 and uh, around 2,300 um, people who are infected. And um, we have uh, something like uh, eight, eight, uh, 80 dead people, yes, and um, people who have been, who have recovered are around 100 and, um, 140, I think, I'm, I'm not sure, but we have, every day we have a daily, a daily report from the Ministry of Health of mm -hmm. Cameroon, yes. <clears throat> Those numbers seem low. So do you feel your government did, did the right things or is perhaps not enough testing out there? Will it, will the wave arrive? Is it too early? What is your feeling? Frank avait demandé à propos des, des chiffres, des nombres des gens qui, sont, qui ont été affectés par, uh, par le COVID. Uh, et puis, um, comme Hermine a répondu que les, les chiffres sont quand même assez bas, uh, Franck avait demandé si ça veut dire que le gouvernement a bien ré réagi ou bien est-ce qu'il n'y a pas suffisamment de tests pour savoir vraiment uh, qui ont été affectés. Hum, oui, aujourd'hui, on est déjà à près de... Est pres, on est à presque 3000 cas. Hein, on est à 1900, en fait, euh, par là. Et euh, euh, dans les 105, presque 140 décès. Euh, donc, euh, mais je, je pense que le gouvernement, au, au début, euh, a vite réagi parce que euh, deux semaines, après qu'on ait eu les premiers cas, on a fermé les frontières, on a euh, arrêté euh, l'école. Mm -hmm. Donc, euh, on a arrêté l'école. Je pense que le gouvernement a, a vite réagi. Mm -hmm. euh, et on a eu un problème au Cameroun. Euh... Maybe we translate first, Heather? Maybe sure. Heather. So he confirmed the, the numbers that um, Ermine was giving a couple thousand affected, uh, about 140 deceased. Um, he said that after the first infection, within two weeks, the government um, had closed the, the borders and shut down the schools. So, but they, they responded fairly quickly. Um, and then he was just saying um, about other issues um, mm -hmm. at hand. Avis, tu disais par rapport aux autres problèmes? Aux autres problèmes parce que dans un premier temps la majorité des cas que nous avons eu ici c'était euh, des, des camerounais qui revenaient de enfin non mm -hmm. okay. euh, et euh, voilà c'est comme ça qu'il y a eu une explosion mm -hmm. c'est quand même allé très vite hein. en deux mois nous sommes passés de, de un cas à près de 3000 donc voilà 
Le, le gouvernement a bien réagi au début, mais après, il y a eu aussi un relâchement, justement mmh. avec euh, la réouverture des, mmh. des lieux d'ambiance de, et tout le reste. C'est pour ça que ça ne fait que grandir. So he said that um, uh, in, the, in the beginning, the first month, there was just um, when, or sorry, all the cases were coming from Cameroonians who were returning from Europe. Um, so within very short time, they, there was an explosion from one case to about 3,000. Um, so the government uh, responded well in the beginning, but then there was, uh, um, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, then there was a resurgence um, mm -hmm. after, afterwards. Mm -hmm. So how is the situation uh, for theater artists? Uh, since we all talk about theater, this is our field, that's what we work in. Um, how is uh, the situation for theater artists at the moment in Cameroon? Are there rehearsals? Uh, do you collaborate uh, uh, online? Is every, are theaters open? Are performances happening outside? What is the situation? I mean, to really respond? Euh, ouais, euh, personnellement, je vais répondre euh, par rapport à, à moi, quoi. Mm. Uh, let's say in general, um, like most artists in the world, we are victim of this pandemic um, because we have or we have our projects and uh, different activities that have been cancelled. And uh, we are kind of, uh, well, the, the, the frontiers are closed. So we can go any, we can go nowhere out of Cameroon. <laughs> we are kind of okay. Let's wait and see. But um, personally, um, I, I I keep doing my my own thing, like I used to say. I keep doing my own thing, um, and I have uh, a few few projects with some friends of mine, some colleagues, some artistical projects that we are working on like uh, reading uh, online, like, um, and also we, uh, also a kind of we, rehearsals. We have some rehearsals also with a uh, few of my colleagues. So you have rehearsals uh, together in a room or outside or? No, outside, like uh, in a, in a, I, I call in a theater laboratory. Yes. So it's not outside, well, it's not in the room. We, there is a place, it's a, prof a professional uh, theater laboratory where we can go and work. And meet, so we meet together and we, we do things together, yes. At the beginning, we were paying attention to, to remain, <laughs> to, to stay like far from the other so that we can, we, we can respect the, the, the social uh, distance, but then we uh, at, at a moment at a point we decided to to where well, we kind of said like okay to hell with <laughs> to social distance it's theater we need to to feel at least each other if even if we do we, we don't touch each other physically but at least we can come close to each mm -hmm. other to do so what we have to do how many people were rehearsing and what was the play or what was the theater project you worked on uh, it's we are we are five five people on the pro in the project. Um, it's not my project. It's the project of um, a stage director and a playwright or two, who is uh, named Martin Ambaha, and uh, we are working uh, on a project uh, on a live uh, li a live theater project with other people um, from Germany and elsewhere in the world. So it's a kind of a kind of um, international project, if I can say. Inter so, so like we are a Zoom very, on online we are preparing uh, things. Yes, exactly. We are preparing uh, uh, things on confinement, on the on this confinement, and uh, we are presenting it each uh, Thursday. Well, it, there we are ten groups, and each group is presenting his project um, on, on Thursday. One right. Thursday per group, yeah. Right. Edouard, how is it for you? Are you engaged in uh, in theater at the moment? And how, what is the situation? Uh, oui, c'est Edouard qui demandait uh, à propos des projets que mm. vous faites actuellement. Est-ce que vous êtes toujours en train de continuer avec des projets de théâtre, ou bien on a fait une pause, ou bien comment est-ce qu'on uh, on, on, on le fait pendant que on doit porter des masques, etc. 
Oui, enfin, il euh, y, a, y a des projets qui se sont arrêtés. Par exemple, euh, euh, en ce moment, je ne devais pas être au Cameroun, je devais être en résidence d'écriture, en train de travailler sur euh, un texte. Donc, euh, du fait de la fermeture de, des frontières et de la situation aussi en France, ça s'est arrêté. Et euh, la situation, justement, c'est qu'il y a des, des projets vraiment qui se sont arrêtés comme ça. Mais, uh, let's wait, let's translate. Uh, one second, so, let's translate. So he, he said that some, some projects have, have stopped, have had, to, have had to stop at least temporarily. He wasn't supposed to be in Cameroon right now, um, but he was supposed to be doing a, res, a writing residency. Um, C'était à Limoges, la résidence, vous Non, c'était à La Chartreuse, à Avignon. Ah, La Chartreuse. So, so he was supposed to be in residence at the Chartreuse in Avignon, in France, for writing residency. So um, the situation is that some, some of the, the projects are temporarily at least on hold. Um, et après, tu disais que um, la situation... Oui, et après, donc, euh, quand, 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 enfin, quand on se retrouve face à cet événement, on se dit, on va travailler, mais au début, je n'ai vraiment pas pu... Euh, travailler parce que quand <rire> pour écrire mais ça marche quand c'est fait volontairement hmm. tu disais que tu devrais continuer à travailler mais d'abord tu n'as pas pu et puis c'est découpé un peu tu n'as oui, pas pu disais, écrire je disais euh, quand je me retrouve donc dans cette situation c'est dit c'est il on peut pas se déplacer mm -hmm. Pour rester chez vous, je me dis, bon, ok, je vais donc travailler. Mais je n'arrive pas, parce que psychologiquement, euh, tu n'arrives à rien sortir dans ces conditions-là. Travail. D'accord. So, so he wanted to, because he couldn't go anywhere, to continue to work on his own. But in the beginning, he wasn't able to, because um, psychologically, nothing was coming out. Um, he wasn't able to, to think um, uh, as a writer. Are you with your fam? Yeah. Are you with your family, or um, where where are, where, are, where do you stay now? Uh, Frank, he's with his wife and his daughter. Mm -hmm. So, and for how many weeks are you there in your home? Pendant combien de semaines? No, ça fait pratiquement presque. Depuis le mois de février, je suis là, donc euh, on va dire presque deux mois. Mais je sors tout le temps parce que je vais aussi rendre visite à, à ma maman qui est déjà vieille, à mes parents qui habitent aussi à Yaoundé. Donc voilà, je so, suis vraiment pas presque deux, trois fois par semaine. Um, so he, he's been where he is since February, um, but he does go out and visit his parents. Uh, a couple times a week, two or three times a week. Mm. And I mean, you are uh, yeah. also, uh, are you working by yourself? Are you with your, uh, your family or friends? Where do you, how, where do you stay? Uh, well, I stay uh, with, uh, well, I live with my brother mm -hmm. and uh, my junior brother. And uh, well, as I said, three, three, three days per week, I have to go to rehearse with my colleagues. And um, well, apart from that, I, I'm, I, I'm really a, a home person. <laughs> That's my, my nature. Usually I, I, stay, I stay at home, I do my things at home. But when I want to go to visit my friends or my other family members, my relatives, I do go out to, to do that. So at times I would go to visit my grandmother Uh, or my, my uncles, my aunts and cousins <coughs> and friends also. Yesterday, for example, I was uh, visiting a friend who lost his father. So we were together because he's supposed to, bur to bury his father this weekend. So we were mm -hmm. kind of supporting him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lost it through COVID? Uh, through, um... <coughs> Sorry, can you repeat? He, he lost it through the virus? Or... He's No, 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 not the virus, not the coronavirus. His father mm. was sick for more than one year. One year. So yeah, it has nothing to do mm. with the, the coronavirus. But so how do you feel both as artists or as, you know, um, in Cameroon, how do you feel in this time of uh, Corona? What goes through your mind? What are you thinking about? 
Et donc, vous pensez à quoi pendant ces moments euh, difficiles en tant qu'artiste, en tant qu'être humain Elvis, je te laisse peut-être commencer à répondre. <rire> euh, on pense à quoi Bon, en tant qu'artiste, euh, vraiment, moi, j'avoue, moi, je pense beaucoup plus à travailler, euh, mais je travaille mais en, en me demandant à quoi demain ressemblera peut-être le travail qu'on est en train de faire, ça sert à quoi, comment ça va être présenté ou diffusé. So, so first of all, he thinks about working, but then he's always asking himself, um, what is this going to, what is this work going to be like? How is it going to be presented? Et, et en tant qu'artiste aussi, on se demande euh, euh, comment même survivre à ça parce que c'est avec euh, l'artiste a besoin de mobilité pour vivre. L'artiste a besoin que ses, ses œuvres circulent. Euh, besoin euh, de circuler physiquement et tout. Donc, vraiment, c'est plein d'interrogations en tant qu'artiste quand même. Mm -hmm. So, he also asks himself as, as an artist, how is he going to survive this? Because artists need to, um, they need to circulate, they need to move around, they need to get their works moved around. So, how are they going to um, get out of, uh, move past this? Um, uh, uh, yes, um, well, for me, as a person, as a, as a citizen, as a person, uh, this moment is kind of, um, well, maybe what I, I would say will be strange, but I feel fine. I mean, I feel fine, like I'm like, okay, it's something, it's kind of historical that the whole world for uh, a certain time stopped. And it is the occasion to, to think about what we want as humans, what we want, what we wish to, 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 to have for us. Like, uh, do, we, do we still want to live in a world where the human has been put aside and we are more focused on money, 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 and money, only on money? Or do we want to think, to think mm -hmm. about our society and to try to find a way to put back the human being uh, at the center of everything? So as a person, I'm kind of very fine about this situation. Like we have to, to use it to think, to really think. And uh, as an artist, It's a it's a, a moment of introspection for me because I'm like okay if this situation has to 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 last longer than what we may think or uh, or what we may yes what if if it lasts longer than what we may think how uh, am I going to 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 do my work as an artist how am I going to I have to find a way to do something to propose my art to the audience in a different way because for me i i'm also kind of right now questioning the real use usefulness of my of my job as an artist mm -hmm. to this how how am i being useful to the society am i being useful or am i just fencing being useful so as an artist mm -hmm. i'm kind of questioning that currently Yes. Well, did do you find some answers? Um, yes, I do find some answers, <laughs> a few, few, a few answers, um, and uh, I'm like, I have to. One of the answers, or I can say, for until now, the the the, the answer I, I have found, the most precise answer that I have found until now is that. Um, I, my job is to to bring hope and strength to people right now because I know that even if here in Cameroon we are not confined or in Africa in general we are not confined I know that elsewhere in the world people are confined and many people are really uh, anguished or afraid of this situation and I 
I think that, well, I'm sure that one of the, the goals of my job is to, to, bring, to, to bring hope, to raise hope, um, to bring hope to other people, yes. And I have to do it through, if I have to use internet to do it, well, I will do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, um, Aristide, are you questioning your work, the foundations of what you think about theater, what you want to do? In it? Are you, are you uh, reflecting on, on your role as an artist and how you are useful or not, as uh, Armin said? Hermine, euh, donc Hermine avait dit que tu as, tu as compris ce qu'elle avait dit par rapport à <rire> donc, par rapport à son art. Elle pose toujours des questions. Est-ce que mon art, est-ce que ça sert à quelque chose à quelqu'un? Elle avait dit oui. Et il faut donner de l'espoir aux autres. Donc Franck, ça avait demandé également. Um, Qu'est-ce que tu veux faire au fond de, de ton travail en tant qu'artiste? Um, qu Qu'est-ce um, qu que vous, uh, vous pensez vous devoir faire? Um, actuellement, en ce, ce moment-là. Oui, bon, en ce moment, je ne sais pas ce que, enfin, vraiment, comme je l'ai dit, c'est plein de questions qu'en tant qu'artiste, euh, sur le coup, euh, ce n'est pas possible de trouver des solutions. C'est-à-dire que euh, j'aimerais bien faire quelque chose, mais je me sens euh, presque impuissant. Ce qui fait que même ce que j'écris en ce moment, les projets sur lesquels je travaille, les projets d'écriture, c'est des projets qui n'ont euh, rien à voir même avec la situation actuelle. Peut-être plus tard, je pourrais écrire sur cette situation. Donc, euh, en tant qu'artiste, j'aimerais bien mettre ça dans des œuvres. So, so right now, um, he, he would love for his work to, to offer some sort of solution, but it's not possible. What he's writing right now has nothing to do with what's going on, um, but he hopes to be able to put that in his into his work later on. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> how is how is it for theater artists in Cameroon? Is it easy to do theater to create theater? What what is the place of theater in your community? Don't, uh, well, in Cameroon, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy because um, we have something very specific here is that all, or let me say, all, almost every uh, cultural places have been closed for years now, for decades now. So we, we, are, we have very, very uh, few places like um, the laboratory I was talking about that is called Othni. Uh, so it's a private, that is a private um, initiative, but public uh, places where people can do theater or, or, or write theater or, well, or rehearse <laughs> in Cameroon, we, 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 we really don't have a lot mm -hmm. or we don't have, it. maybe there is what we call uh, the Cameroonian Cultural Center in Yaoundé here, but you put that, I mean, except that we don't really have um, places where to work here. We are always in, uh, creating, I mean, in, uh, imag imagining or inventing where, uh, places to work, to do theater. Mm -hmm. It could be uh, courtyards, it could be houses, <laughs> it could be any field that, field that is open, but we don't have... Um, We don't really have specific specific places, like official places where we can do theater, except when there are private uh, private uh, places or initiatives. Mm -hmm. So it's a kind of it's a daily fight, yes, to do our job. Uh, Elvis Frank avait demandé quelle est la place du théâtre au Cameroun, um, quelles sont les réalités par rapport au, au travail de, du théâtre. Oui, c'est comme Hermine l'a dit, parce que l'espace de diffusion, il n'y en a pratiquement pas, et les petits espaces qui 
sorry, kind of cut out. He was saying, as I mean, yeah, Eduard, could you take your yeah, take your video off? Maybe we just heard the sound. Maybe that might help. Um, Edouard, si tu veux essayer, tu peux arrêter la vidéo et puis comme ça, okay. on a que, on a que um, sorry, uh, no, 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 pas toi, Elvis, 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 si tu veux mm -hmm. uh, couper pour l'instant ton vidéo uniquement, comme ça on peut t'entendre peut-être mieux, ça, peut-être ça peut aller mieux. Tu es là, tu m'entends? I don't know if he's there right now. Um, but he, he was saying in agreement with Ermin that there aren't a lot of, um, I think he'll try and reconnect. There aren't a lot of um, spaces for, uh, for theater um, uh, in the public. So they have to kind of be creative, inventive. Flank, I should say that, um, that, yeah. that you know, um, one thing that's <clears throat> so, um, important is that Cameroon has other issues that have been affecting the country well before COVID-19 did. Um, uh, c'est vrai, Hermine, oui, qu'il y a quand même d'autres problèmes, d'autres grands problèmes euh, au Cameroun. Oui, oui, ça c'est vrai. Euh, bon, avant, avant le Covid 19, on a, on a déjà la situation de, de la, de la guerre parce que les autres, il y en a qui disent toujours la crise, la crise dans le, les régions du Nord-Ouest et du Sud-Ouest, qui sont les deux régions anglophones du Cameroun. Mais Pardon, tu, depuis... veux, tu, tu veux répondre en anglais? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pardon. Okay, so I, I was saying that before COVID-19, we are already facing very difficult situations here in Cameroon. Uh, for example, for instance, the, the war in the Northwest and the Southwest regions of Cameroon, which are the two English speaking regions of the country. And uh, in the far North, the region of the far north where we are facing these, um, the, we are fighting Boko Haram. And uh, so these are the situations that are very, very preoccupying here for us. And before COVID-19, they were already very preoccupying. And now, okay, the COVID-19 is just adding up to, to that, but uh, <laughs> Yes, but I mean, I think that those two situations I'm, I'm talking about are much more um, serious, I mean, for our country than COVID-19, really, mm -hmm. because it's about the stability of our country, about peace in our country, justice, and um, yes, and what everything that has to do with the way our country is working is not very well working right now since something like five years now that we are facing all these mm -hmm. situations mm -hmm. um so uh, um, i uh, uh, aristide uh, uh, also spoke with us and said that compared to ongoing problems in ma with malaria for example and mm -hmm. other things um he felt uh, COVID is just an additional complication mm. in the life, but it is nowhere as much in the center as it is in Europe or in North America. Do you feel uh, that the world uh, understands a little bit better your situation now, which is normal for you to live with uncertainty? Um, is it normal for us to live with uncertainty? Uh, maybe. Hello. Je crois Hello. Est... I think he's still there. Is just it's okay. Just... Okay. Okay. So um, I I um, yes, we are. I can say that we are used to live with uncertainty. That's for sure. <laughs> I don't know if there is a for most African anyway. It is uh, very usual to live with uncertainty. We never know what to expect. Uh, we never, I mean, socially, professionally, politically, uh, in every domain, we are always in uncertainty. So it's usual. And um, we just have to, how can I say it? Maybe that's what the, the Western world in general 
uh, don't get, doesn't get like, uh, okay, these people are living in a specific way that has nothing to do with our own lifestyle. And, uh, but maybe the major problem is that the other people, I mean, I mean, uh, West, the Westerners, most of them don't try to, are not respectful of the fact that we don't have the same problems. We may have, we may share some problems, like right now we are sharing this COVID-19 pandemic, but we have malaria, we have um, many, many, many other things here. We have uh, wars, we have uh, famines, we have many, 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 many problems. Every day, we are not sure about employment. You can go to school, have all the diplomas you want to have. That does not guarantee that you will get a job. You may find yourself just unemployed, though you have you you, you went to school, though you you went to school very far <laughs> in, in in your studies. So we have many many things that we are dealing with every day, and um, maybe what we need is uh, well that's what I'm saying, and I I I. I well, that's what I am saying. I'm not uh, saying that that's what people are saying here, but I, I can say it and I'm, I, I can stick to it. I think that what we need here is um, to find solutions to our problems ourselves. And we need that people out of Africa respect that. We, we need them to respect the fact that we have many situations here that has nothing to do or that have nothing to do with their own situation. Mm -hmm. And we are struggling every day to, to get out of them. It is not easy. It is true that there is corruption. There is um, a lot of corruption. Yes. And uh, it's also our, our challenge. I mean, it's our challenge. We have to, 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 to face it and to challenge it and to find a solution to, to, to it mm -hmm. ourselves our own means taking into account into consideration our realities well it's a shame that we lost uh elvis because i'm sure he has things to oh, say about. Elvis, He's back. Elvis, okay. uh, is back. elvis Great. yes um, as far as we know four hundred thousand people die in africa of malaria each year so well, what do you think about the COVID and europe and america how it's reacting to it Donc Elvis, euh, pendant que tu étais euh, <rire> absent pendant un moment, euh, moi je vais dire qu'il y a d'autres choses quand même euh, au Cameroun, des d'autres problèmes même avant le Covid. Et donc euh, Amine disait que oui, bien, euh, il y a aussi la guerre, etc., etc. Et puis euh, euh, Franck avait dit que avait demandé est-ce que le monde comprend un peu davantage qui sont les réalités euh, en Afrique. En, euh, je ne sais pas compris ce que tu viens de dire. Oui, donc, euh, puisque maintenant, tout le monde doit euh, subir avec, euh, avec ses, ses difficultés, avec euh, les difficultés, les problèmes venant de, de ce virus. Euh, donc, est-ce que ça veut dire que maintenant, les, les autres pays du monde vont mieux comprendre ce que ça veut dire habiter, vivre en Afrique maintenant. Et donc, Amine disait que non, mais en fait, c'était au nous, les Africaines, à améliorer notre propre situation. Mmh. Tu vois un peu? Oui. Donc, donc, Franck avait dit que, qu qu'est-ce qu que tu en penses par rapport à ça? Est-ce qu'il y a des choses que le monde occidental ne comprend pas? Sorry, Frank, I just recounted. Yes, yes, we have to, but if those can, yeah, oui. okay, go on. Mm -hmm. Oui, bon, effectivement, il y a, il y a beaucoup d'autres euh, problèmes ici, hein. c'est-à-dire que nous sommes victimes de pas mal de choses. Ouais. Euh, la mauvaise gestion de nos pays, la corruption, l'absence des infrastructures culturelles, comme on, on le disait tout à l'heure. Donc, on a beaucoup de problèmes. Et parmi ces problèmes, justement, on a des problèmes déjà de maladie. Et, euh, oui, tu veux we, donc, uh, so he said that here there are um, a fair amount of other problems. Uh, he mentioned corruption, also poverty as well. And he said uh, among the problems, there are also quite a number of other diseases. 
Et, et ce que le monde, enfin, je pense que ce que le monde, il y a un débat là qui est aussi très important, c'est euh, par exemple sur la médecine là, la médecine euh, euh, traditionnelle euh, africaine, mm. et où, euh, par exemple, nous en Afrique, nous, nous vivons par exemple avec euh, une maladie comme euh, le paludisme. Chaque année, je vais attraper, la, depuis que je suis petit, j'attrape le paludisme au moins une fois par, par chaque année. Et je peux guérir du paludisme sans entrer dans une pharmacie. Donc, il y a aussi, par exemple, ce regard sur la médecine euh, africaine et sur d'autres aspects qui peuvent aussi permettre de comprendre qu'il y a aussi des choses que l'Afrique a à donner au monde. Yeah. Let's translate for a moment. So, so he said, um, there, there are other... Um, there are other, uh, um, other diseases, and he said... Um, one of the things that's a big uh, point of discussion is the traditional African uh, treatments, medicines. So he said that, for instance, he himself, every year he gets sick with malaria and he's able to get better without ever going to the pharmacy. Um, so uh, in, in terms of this, uh, this point of view, it's important to, to understand the, perspe the African perspective on traditional medication. Mm -hmm. so, Uh, regard, uh, on regarde sur uh, les, les médicaments traditionnels africains, tu disais qu'il faut comprendre. Euh, oui, et, ça, euh, oui, mais même dans le, les, les rapports politiques euh, mm -hmm. sur, le, sur le plan mondial, il y a des choses que l'Afrique a, a besoin. Par exemple, l'Afrique fonctionne au rythme, par exemple, pour nous qui avons été colonisés par euh, des pays européens. Nous fonctionnons au rythme de ces pays. Ouais. Les, 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 les mesures qui sont prises en Europe ne peuvent pas être appliquées ici, parce que ici les gens doivent, les gens vivent au jour le jour. Donc l'Afrique doit créer son mode, son mode de développement, son mode de fonctionnement qui n'est pas forcément le mode de développement, le mode de fonctionnement des pays occidentaux qui ont d'autres réalités. Et c'est pareil même avec le théâtre, par exemple, pour nous les artistes. Mm. So he said that um, in regards to politics, um, Africa ha needs to figure out its own way forward. So these countries that were colonized by Europe, they still live according to the rhythm of Europe. Um, and they need, to, um, they need to understand how to live day by day and not necessarily um, deal with things, respond to things in the same way that Europe does. Um, for instance, they need to figure out their own way of moving forward in development, their own way of moving forward in terms of addressing um, um, COVID-19 and other things. Uh, and similarly, in terms of making their theater, they need to define that in their own terms and not European terms. How do you define your theater? Tu définis ton théâtre alors comment Le théâtre Oui. Your, your theater, the theater you make, how do you define it as a indif indifference to uh, Europe or others Puisque tu disais que de, ton théâtre, ça doit se faire développer d'une façon d'autre que l'Europe, puisque c'est quand même, c'est un théâtre africain. Alors, comment est-ce que tu, tu définis le théâtre Pourquoi le théâtre euh, africain Puisque le théâtre, pour moi, il est, il est universel. Mais euh, en tant que, euh, je ne pense pas qu'on peut faire du théâtre dans un pays où des gens meurent encore de faim, ouais. euh, comme dans un pays où les gens mangent à leur faim. C'est-à-dire que que va raconter ce théâtre euh, Hermine parlait par exemple tout à l'heure d'inventer de, de, des autres modes de présentation, enfin de, de, de diffusion ou de, de création. Donc à tous les niveaux, l'Afrique doit repenser. Je n'ai pas forcément la solution, mais de se dire que dans un pays où euh, le théâtre est vieux de 50 ans, ou de 100 ans, on ne va pas le faire comme là où le théâtre est vieux de 4 siècles. Donc voilà, let's, let's, translate, uh, let's translate for a moment. So he says, um, he says that he doesn't know about, uh, about his theater versus African theater. His theater, he feels, is very universal. Um, but he believes, and he can't speak for everybody, but he believes that um, we have to think about 
what does this theater want to sell uh, to say? What does this theater want to, um, what are the ways of using it, of, of sharing it? Um, um, what does it, what does it need to respond to? Um, so he says he doesn't have any solutions himself to offer, but he does think that we need to keep asking these, or they need to keep asking these questions as artists. Why do you do theater, Elvis? Pourquoi tu fais du théâtre alors? Pourquoi je fais du théâtre? Oui. Je fais du théâtre parce que euh, parce que parce que j'aime ça, parce que j'aime ça et je ne trouve pas d'autres moyens de d'exprimer justement. Je passe par ça, par le théâtre justement pour euh, pour transmettre ce que je voudrais transmettre, pour dire ce que j'ai à dire. C'est pour ça que même ce que je raconte dans ce que j'écris part toujours de, 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 des choses qui me sont enfin, qui me touchent directement ou qui part de ma réalité de tous les jours. So he says, um, I'm, I do theater because I love it, um, because it's the way that I find to express myself, um, and because uh, it's the way that I found to say what I have to say. Okay. And, uh, uh, and Armin, why do you do theater under these uh, complicated different circumstances? Why do I do theater in complicated circumstances? <laughs> like, yeah, in the... Yes, but... Well, I do theater because I, um, I really... First of all, because I... Theater is all, my, all of my life. And it is not... Um, I'm not saying it's like uh, just a kind of... Uh, saying, I'm not just saying it, it's the truth. I was born from um, artist's parents, so <laughs> theater is all of my life, and I love it, really. And I do theater because I really think that it's, um, it's a powerful mean to, to transform the society, to transform people, to help people um, find who they really are, and find what they really want and how they can work to to get to what they really want for themselves so for me it's a real mean to transform the society and uh, taking into account the realities we live in because as lv say i'm not going to do theater in cameroon like uh uh, someone uh, does theater in France or someone does theater in, U in the USA. No, we have to take into consideration our realities, the way people laugh, the way they dance, the way they move, <laughs> the way they joke, <laughs> because every society has uh, its own way of doing things, saying things, expressing things. So for me, it's a real mean to... It's a mean to really transform things to the better. Mm -hmm. and for what the works? Better. What, what forms of theater work best in Cameroon? What did you find? How can you communicate uh, these, your stories best or what you want to say? Donc, Elvis, uh, Amine avait dit que pour elle, le théâtre, c'est une façon de transformer la société. Uh, et puis, Franck avait dit, alors, quel, uh, quel moyen um, quelles, quelles sont les, les, les formes? Les formes, oui, les formes. Um, comment est-ce qu'on peut décrire le théâtre camerounais? Quelle forme um, fonctionne? Fonctionne. Mm -hmm. Frank, do you mean um, in terms of in terms of written text, in terms of dance? Text, as performance, dance, is it outside, inside, site specific? What works best, and what can we learn from you? Les mots de théâtre, alors. Il est, assez, il est assez varié. Il est assez varié parce que euh, chacun a son approche. Ah. Chacun a son approche du théâtre. Euh, par exemple, moi, moi mon approche, c'est de présenter des pièces dans un, dans un certain euh, style, en jouant sur du comique, en jouant sur euh, un certain nombre de choses. Il y a d'autres approches. Euh, donc, il n'y a pas, je ne pense pas qu'on peut dire qu'il y a un exemple type. Ah, bon, okay. déjà que le, le théâtre, voilà, il est, il est assez récent okay. et je pense que c'est en construction encore. Ok. Donc, il dit qu'il ne pense pas qu'il y a vraiment 
atypical form. Um, that the theater is so varied enough. Um, and that for him, for example, um, every, everyone has their own approach for him. For example, he uses a lot of comedy in his theater. Um, and that's, that's just his own style. Um, but he doesn't know that there's really uh, um, um, a Cameronian way, I should say. I mean, I mean, what can we learn from you? What do you feel works to, to, to get messages to the people and to help to transform society and community? Well, as um, I would just say something that uh, will, in addition, in addition to what uh, LV said, because we cannot say there is a typical form here that works because you can go, to, uh, we can take a classic, a classic theater, like uh, when, what, what were, were, was brought to us by, by Europeans. But there is also, as you say, there is also, um, uh, comedy that works very well here. Well, de depending on um, on who practices theater and depending on the audience, you can do whatever you want to do. Because before the colonial theater form, we we do we did have different ways to to entertain here. Like the way um, we had. Um, um, Story, storytelling, we had uh, uh, even uh, dan dances, performances, we, we did have that. And we had many different things to, to, that we used to, 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 that we used to entertain ourselves. So we can just, what we do here usually is that we just use some, um, some of the elements from our traditional uh, ways of entertainment that we use, that we add in our way of practicing theater, where depending uh, depending from depending from one stage director to another or one playwright to another play playwright, and uh, we use it to 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 communicate with our audience. So people are open here. They are open to what we can bring and what we can propose because mm -hmm. we try to do things with them also. Mm -hmm. If you both go, let's say to an Avignon, you go to an Avignon theater festival and you see uh, European theater works, what do you think? What goes through your mind? <laughs> Franck avait demandé ce que vous pensez par rapport au théâtre européen. Donc, quand vous allez, euh, par exemple, au festival à Avignon, euh, qu'est-ce qu que vous, vous allez découvrir là-bas? Et qu'en pensez-vous? Quand pensez nous allons où? What do you à think Avignon? of that theater you see? Avignon. Au théâtre. Avignon. What do you think of the theater you see, for example, in an Avignon festival? Que je vois comme spectacle? Et non, par rapport euh, au théâtre des autres là-bas. Ah, d'accord. Qu'est-ce que, qu que tu penses <rire> Oui, par rapport au théâtre des autres. Ouais. Voilà, justement, en fait, euh, quand je vais dans ce festival, je, je, je me rends compte que euh, le théâtre, les différents spectacles que je vois, euh, c'est assez, assez divers. Par exemple, moi, le spectacle que j'ai vu, euh, je ne sais pas moi, à la cour des... De, de, du Palais des Papes ou euh, le spectacle que je regarde dans, dans un autre théâtre, je vraiment je, je peux m'approcher à des éléments. Par exemple, moi en tant qu'auteur, j'aime le théâtre à texte et c'est ce type de théâtre souvent que je choisis. Et donc, je me retrouve en fait, je, je voyage avec les, la pièce dans l'univers que je découvre. Maintenant, je peux, il peut avoir une rencontre. Il peut avoir un beau spectacle, mais que je trouve très éloigné de, de ma réalité ouais. ou de, de ma pratique. Yeah, Pardon, je n'ai pas capté le mot. Tu disais que tu, tu aimes le théâtre? À texte. J'aime le, le théâtre où il y a du texte. Ah oui, uh, avec le texte. OK. So he said that um, when, uh, when he goes to a festival in Avignon, for example, um, there are so many diverse, uh, there's such a diversity among the, the, different, the different shows that you can see. Um, and there are certain 
elements of different spectacles, different shows that he really um, gets really interested in. Um, one thing that he really likes is text-based theater. Um, and he feels like he can sort of take the journey with, with them to follow the full narrative. But would that theater work in, in Cameroon? The, the shows you see there, are they, would they speak to people, these forms? Est-ce qu'un public camerounais appréciera euh, aussi ces spectacles-là, les spectacles um, à Avignon que, que tu as trouvé intéressant? Or do you have to find new forms? You have to reinterpret what you see. Ou bien, donc est-ce qu'un public camerounais appréciera ça? Ou bien, uh, est-ce qu'il faut inventer d'autres formes? Est-ce que c'est euh, un public différent qu'en Europe, je veux dire? Bon, le public pourrait accepter, euh, pourrait, euh, accepter certains spectacles et euh, le public pourrait accepter parce que dans plusieurs de ces spectacles, il y a, il y a des spectacles, je vais dire, spectaculaires. Et c'est ces effets où même si le public ne comprend pas parce que c'est spectaculaire, le public peut, euh, peut adhérer. Mm -hmm. So, he said that, um, uh, yeah, that... Any, any audience in the audience in Cameroon, for example, will accept that it's a show. And some of the shows have more spectacular elements. Um, and so even if they don't understand all the cultural contexts and nu the nuances, they'll still be able to follow because there's so much else going on. C'est ça. Parce qu'il y, y a par exemple un rapport au public ici qui est très différent des spectacles ailleurs. Ici, le public fait partie même du spectacle. Parfois, le public parle même aux acteurs pendant qu'ils jouent. Donc, mm -hmm. et, et il faut ça pour que le public euh, adhère à un spectacle. Il faut qu'il soit transporté tout au long du spectacle. So he said that there is a difference, um, though, between the relationship between the performers and the audience in Cameroon, um, because really the audience in Cameroon is part of the show. Um, they, they need to be able to feel part of the show and able to fully... Uh, um, uh, appreciate the, the mm -hmm. show that's happening. So, Armin, how do you make uh, the audience part of the show in your work? What do you do to make to make them participate? Um, how do I make the the audience part of the show? First of all, I um, um, what I do, what I, I I'm doing more and more now is that I don't do any performance. I mean, in front of the audience like there is a stage in front of the audience and there is the audience. I, I tend to, what I tend to do now is to have a performance that is taking place in, in, in the audience, around the audience, like at times you will have the actors that are sitting with the audience next to someone in the audience or just doing things around the audience. So we, we are trying, what, what I try to do is to break this frontal uh, stage audience uh, aspect of theater. That's how, what, well, that's my method. I think that is a very interesting method to use um, to create a performance or a play or a show that can be staged everywhere in the space, not, not only at a specific point where there is a stage and the, the audience is far from the stage. I also always try to get this, the, the audience really not to, to, to not to feel not to feel far from the, the, the actors and the actors not to feel far from the audience. They have to feel um, they, they, they have to be a kind of a, they have to be merged. Yes, that's what I try to do in in my my own work. I tend to do that now. I was not doing it before, but it was. I, I came to that because it was always, that was always, um, I was always questioning that because I was like, okay, I don't want to do a theater where people are, don't feel connected. I want to do something where the audience feel connected to, to what is happening. So from the very beginning, uh, I had plays where there is the, the actors on the stage and the audience were elsewhere. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that. I want to do something. I want to do more. So I finally came to this kind of globalizing, if I can say, theater, 
with the audience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a very interesting. And I'm it's still working to it, it though. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. still working to it. So it's not, <laughs> I, I, do, I, I just, I don't want to say that I found the final solution and it's perfect. No, I'm still working to mm. it. Yeah. It's interesting also, Emilio Rao and uh, this theater in Ghent, when he talked to us, you know, he yes. kind of, you know, echoed what you said, you know, to find these forms that are outside uh, in community to go to other places and small places. So I think you are also there at the a, at a forefront of uh, finding, finding forms. For both of your questions, what theater do you admire? What what inspires you? What theater artists in the world do you look up to? Do you copy Elvis? No, Les artistes et les les artistes qui t'inspire. Ah, les artistes qui t'inspire. Les artistes qui m'inspire. Kofi Kwaole. Kofi Kwaole, yes. Kofi Kwaole, que j'adore. Wole Soinka. Wole Soinka. Wole Wole Soinka. Emmanuel Dongala. Et euh, certains musiciens aussi, hein. j'aime beaucoup des, des rappeurs comme euh, MC Solar. Euh, <rire> euh, 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 Pardon, je n'avais pas compris. J'aime aussi des peintres comme Basquiat, Jean-Michel Basquiat, des Jean peintres comme Basquiat. Ça. So he said, um, certain musicians and rappers like MC Solar, um, Jean-Michel Basquiat. Tu avais dit. Painter, Gio yes. Mm -hmm. Gio 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 c'est ça? Euh, euh, non, je parlais de. <rire> J'avais pas compris le troisième nom. Le troisième nom. Voilà. Pardon. And Armin, Armin, for yeah, Bolesoyinka and uh, Kofi yeah. Kuli. Uh, and Armin, for you, who do you, who inspires you? What theater artists work do you know, and what is important to you? Well, I would try to answer to that question because it's a question I don't like usually because. I'm so, I don't know if we say eclectical in my, in my um, artistic views or things like that. So it's very difficult for me to answer that question because I have a lot of artists that, are, that I admire, that are inspiring to me. But well, let me say, I can say that in theater, for example, I'm very, very inspired by Giordani Nyanguna, by Kofi Kwaule, Martin Ambaha, And uh, there is actors also that really inspired me, like um, Diarie Tukeita and uh, who else? Mm. Who else? Uh, well, there are many of them. Diarie Tukeita, Yayambile, but also there are writers, there are singers, there are um, mm. painters. Well, I, I have... Um, a lot of influence, artistic influence on, I mean, from different artistic domains like music, paintings, visual arts. And uh, it's difficult for me to say here, okay, this, this one inspired me because they, there are, but there are too many, if I can say, mm -hmm. people that I really admire mm -hmm. in, the, in what they yeah. do in their work. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Thank you. Thank you for, for sharing these lists of names and also good to hear that music and visual art uh, is so uh, significant for you also as forms um, um, yeah. of inspiration. I feel also often, you know, theater artists are very close to the theater world, but the big world of the writing, novelists, uh, poetry, and music, you know, is perhaps not as often um, an inspiration as it should be for, 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 young, yeah. uh, for young artists. So this is a very good reminder. Um, we are coming close to the end of the session, but maybe as a last statement, is there something what you would say to a young artist or to people in Cameroon, but also in the world, how should you use this time of uh, confinement and of uh, uh, best from your experience going through all these crises that you have before and they will be there? What do you feel is important to keep in mind? Donc, Elvis, et tu poses la dernière question. Um, Qu'est-ce que tu dirais aux autres artistes, aux jeunes, peut-être um, comment est-ce qu'on doit faire pendant ce temps-ci? Ce temps Alors, pendant ce temps-ci, euh, il faut, euh, déjà, il faut être très positif, il faut, faut respecter les, les mesures, il faut être très positif, mais il faut aussi utiliser son temps rationnellement. Euh, par exemple, moi, si je n'arrive pas à travailler euh, théâtre, enfin, 
de façon concrète. Je peux faire autre chose. Je peux faire euh, des travaux euh, manuels, euh, mm. un peu de sport, tout ça. Mais il faut être positif. Il faut garder euh, l'espoir. Il, euh, <rire> il faut se dire que peut-être que le théâtre a aussi besoin de ça. Mm. Pour pouvoir exister et créer euh, un autre monde. Quoi. Mm. So he said, above all, everyone should remain positive. Um, so in uh, during these during these times, yes, try and get some work done, try and write, but also he doing other things, manual labor, doing a little bit of sports. Above all, um, keep keep doing things in order to keep hope alive, um, and maybe that's what the theater the theater can provide for people, and mm. the theater going forward will be about. I mean, what's your thought? Um, well, like Elvis, I would say that either to young artists, either to people in general, that people should, yes, people should stay, should stay positive and hopeful and people should not be afraid. And maybe we should stop trying to imagine or to guess what will be tomorrow, what tomorrow will be or what tomorrow will look like. We don't know about tomorrow. We don't know tomorrow. Tomorrow is tomorrow. Is I mean, it's the unknown. So we should maybe try our best to stop worrying about tomorrow, but try to stay positive and just live, like uh, and do things like uh, like Elvis said. If you cannot maybe do something very concrete, a very concrete work. You can do different things. You can read. You can you can work in your garden if you have a garden. You can try and learn something new if it's possible for you. If you have access to internet, there are many things that people can learn to do. You can just enjoy being with your family. Just enjoy being with yourself and not be afraid of introspection, of really trying to 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 to. Yes, introspection. People should not be afraid of that. Okay. People should consider, um, oh, I think that people should think about this period as something uh, positive, not negative. It has negative uh, uh, aspects, for sure. There are people dying. There are many people who are sick. But people, I think people should think about this period like something positive for all of us in general. Mm -hmm. People should stay well, hopeful and positive. Well, this is an important um, 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 reminder, you know, coming from a Cameroon, a country that has gone through civil war and war and uh, where malaria and so many other threats to everyday life uh, existed throughout centuries and, uh, and the experience of uh, being colonized and the idea that, you know, stay positive and uh, don't be afraid of the future and to um, live in the moment in the present. Yeah, so these are uh, important important reminders from, um, from, uh, from artists um, who have seen a lot, whose families, whose uh, friends uh, have gone through moments where the COVID, COVID crisis might seem uh, like a slight disturbance compared to um, the most serious uh, conditions um, they grew up with or people live with in, in Cameroon, but also all over um, Africa. So this is an important reminder um, and also, that I think it's important that we hear that they are looking for forms to break down the fourth wall, to, uh, to, to engage audiences and to go to their places. So it's um, um, uh, wonderful to hear an update from you. Thank you both uh, for taking the time. I apologize for the complications of audio and video, but our show is live. And, um, and, um, and um, so we have uh, experienced some difficulties, but uh, we also heard um, um, what you what you said, and uh, sometimes perhaps uh, the medium is the message. Yes, it is a difficult, difficult message to to cope with. I hope you will join us uh, next uh, week. Um, we will go have another week with uh, artists uh, from around the world. Slowly, we will also have, I think, uh, curators or philosophers, thinkers next to all the artists uh, we heard around from the world. But still, next week we hear from uh, Maria Tri uh, Solostiani. She's from Indonesia, a puppeteer. Indonesia is such a large, big country where we hear so, so, so little from. Um, and Tuesday, we have Pamela Villoresi, who will tell us about Palermo and uh, how theater is uh, uh, having an impact in a, 
in a town, you know, where refugees who arrive from Africa, you know, often it's, it's the very first stop and the mayor of Palermo who has been so open and also sees his town as the town of theater. Uh, Richard Foreman, the great Richard Foreman will uh, uh, join us from New York on uh, Wednesday and uh, talk to him, talk to us about uh, his view um, of, the, of the world. Thomas Oberender is a, a player, but also the director of the Berlin Festspiele um, who has over decades now invited uh, artists to present their work and, uh, and he will uh, join us and, and uh, give us his uh, ideas and reflections on perhaps how what is changing, what has already changed and what art can and, and should do. And then Philip Howe, uh, playwright from New York, uh, will, uh, and of performance artist, he will uh, uh, share with us um, his experience of this moment. We all experience this different in different ways and I think uh, one of the ideas here is to see that the realities we live in are just our own they're constructed there are many different ones that exist next to us and the significant contribution theater and performing arts makes to the world that we understand that we do live in different realities that there are different models we all move in and uh, we are aware of that and that perhaps we start thinking about our processing that what we process um, the way uh, uh, is how we see the world and that we should be open and that there's not one truth in one way and one theater. So um, thank you all for listening. Uh, thanks for the audience. It was, a, of course, a bit technically more difficult today, but it's important to hear voices from Africa. This uh, great big uh, country, also a bit unknown to us, but we shouldn't uh, uh, just follow what we, we just see it here in the media and the work you did and also you once came to the Seagull um, uh, uh, this was a truly a remarkable. Heather, thank you for translating and for being with us. So I hope to um, hear from uh, you more. See you all in New York and to our audience. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to listen. I know this isn't easy well, to thank you messages. And mm -hmm. Armin, Edouard, thank you. And uh, congratulations on your work. We care about you and your work. It's very important what you do. So you're part of a global world theater community. And uh, and we all look up to you and, uh, the, and the work you, you do. So um, stay healthy, uh, stay safe, and tune well, in, and um, all my best. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you for the invitation. It was a We're pleasure. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to talk Bye. to us. Bye. Bye.